What's up, everybody? It's your boy AD, and I'm back to do the SmackDown review for September 8th, 2023. So I'm a little late. <clears throat> Sorry I haven't, you know, didn't tell you guys that I wasn't going to have time because it was one of those days where I was trying to wait and see was I going to have time or what was going on. You know how I'd be where you just don't know until you get there. But it's all good. I was still planning on at least giving y'all a review because y'all know I do at least watch SmackDown, you know. Even if the show wasn't that great. I mean, this show was okay to me, but you know I'm going to go through it, break it down, and talk about how terrible the wrestling world is today. And maybe talk about, I mean... Before I get into it, because it starts off with Charlotte Flair and Shotzi defeating E.L. Sky and Bailey. Like, before I get into it, it's just... What's so amazing to me about what's going on in wrestling, it, what just astonishes me, is how people <clears throat> still don't get it. They still think it's the same wrestling from over a year ago. This is not the same stuff, man. Like, clear as day, once Triple H got into power, clear as day, everybody's thing changed. Everything changed. And a lot of the people who used to be up on the downside, you know, this is why I get confused when I listen to certain people talk about certain people nowadays. But I be thinking to myself, like, dude, this is not 2021, 2022. This is 2023. Y'all still act like certain people are the same when Triple H clearly does not book them and write them the same. It, it literally almost everything changed. And then look at all the people you brought from NXT. <clears throat> so, it's just kind of ridiculous. You know, like a Bianca. Like, some people still think Bianca would be in a mix for a title shot. Like, come on, man. Bianca has not been the same since Triple H. Ever since Triple H's been in power, all he's been doing was using Bianca and teaming her up with other people to get boosted. Notice the same people he, she teamed up to to boost or were the same ones who fought her. Notice that the one who beat her was the same one she was teamed up with. Triple H did all of this. Notice that the whole time she was feuding when she had the title, she kept uh, getting embarrassed and beat up. She never looked good. So that's why I be saying, and then finally she lost the title, and then you thought she was going to win it back, and then she ended up losing it with a cash in the EO, which shows you that she's probably never going to get that title back, especially if Triple H is in power. She ain't getting it back. It's not, look how you don't even see her anymore. You don't even, look, like, ain't that funny, right? All the people that was involved in this feud, and notice Bianca is not even there being seen. Just, just terrible. Like, and it ain't just Bianca. It's many others too. But it's like they're people are, they're trying to act like it's something else. No, man. Just be honest. The product has clearly changed and it's gone down, man. But um, all right. So we had another match with Charlotte Flair. See, this is getting boring. Every SmackDown, we got a tag team match with Charlotte where she's getting a boost from somebody. You just had Shotzi win only because of Charlotte. Now Charlotte is on the team with Shotzi. Like, come on. Shotzi, I mean, she did win the match. But it was, again, all thanks to Charlotte. Everything was pretty much Charlotte. Another match just for Charlotte. EO and them. EO is the women's champion. But you're not setting anything with EO, booking anything with her. You're just throwing her in tag matches with Bailey that they're going to lose. Dakota doesn't do anything. She's just there just to be doing nothing. I mean, come on. Y'all do this every week. Every week is Charlotte Flair, Charlotte Flair, Charlotte Flair, Charlotte Flair. I don't even understand why the crowd cheers for her. She's boring as hell. And it's, it's hard for me to cheer for people who clearly are being pushed down your throats. And ain't that great. I mean, damn. Like I said, give other people a shot. Give other people a chance, you know. I mean, dang, look how Asuka lost that title all quick. They had Asuka step up to EO. You know they want to do Asuka versus EO. You know they want to do that. And guess what? They are doing it. And we've been calling that forever. Yeah, have the two Asian girls fight each other. Even though I don't think Asuka is going to win it back. I think EO is going to keep it. But when I knew it, though, and when they did it, I was like, watch it be little, though. I was like, yeah, watch Asuka go against EO, but watch how it doesn't. It don't be on pay-per-view. And sure enough, it's on SmackDown in two weeks. See? Meaning it's not. They don't care about this. 
And then and, and but watch when Charlotte gets thrown into it, which will probably be the next pay per view. Now watch how all of a sudden they make a big deal out of it. I mean, come on now. This, this is not fun wrestling. I don't and find enjoyment out of this when you know the whole time. See, that's why I think pe people be into this because they just don't know. But you got to pay attention. If you're not fully paying attention and remembering, you got to remember stuff too. Especially these days, it's kind of easy to remember things because it ain't really happening as quick as what it used to be. Like, it's a, show, a lot of shows, but back in the day in wrestling, man, a lot of, like, big eventful stuff would just happen, like, week after week. We don't really get that anymore. But let's move on. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller interrupt the L.A. night, so I'm just more right. I've been saying for the longest that Grayson Waller is going to be the replacement for Austin Theory. I've been saying it because it's so obvious. They And here it go again. Who was Austin Theory? He was Vince McMahon guy. So not a coincidence Triple H would sit there and make him lose his cash in in such a dumb fashion. Triple H did that. Gave him the United States title because he didn't want to blow back, but it made him look stupid the whole time, just like Bianca Belair. Yeah, she had the title, but she was looking dumb the whole time. People got to start paying attention to that too. Just because you got the belt don't mean they're making you look good and don't blame it on the wrestlers because I really do get tired of that. Oh, well, they just didn't have a good title run. They didn't know. No, look how they're getting booked. Just like EO, how can she have a good title run when she's being put in tag matches <clears throat> and losing? Come on now. No real big segments for her. Nothing big. And then Austin Theory and Grayson Wilder, like, come on, man. Here it go again. you just putting Grayson with him just so he can steal Austin's clout. You're building up Grayson using Austin. It's the same crap, man. And again, who is Austin Theory? You see the picture right next to us. That was Vince McMahon's guy. Come on, man. It's not a coincidence that most of all of his guys are falling. Or taking each other out. <clears throat> and nobody cares about L.A. Knight. Yeah, nobody cares about the dude. Yeah, I already know they look like they set up something with him and Roman. Because he stepped to Paul Heyman and interrupted him. Which was rude. That was rude as hell what L.A. Knight did. Like, how you supposed to be? You supposed to be a face, right? So why you just come in here and do some hell ass shit to um, Paul Heyman? And that disgusted me because I would totally hate for Roman to fight him. And it really disgusts me if he ends up winning the title, which could happen. And then that, just that little segment alone just is like, oh, man, they're going to try to set this up. But what they're going to probably do first is solo. They're probably going to do solo versus L.A. first. And then you got Jimmy and Jay running around with, like, with their necks cut off. Like, you know, they're not together. Like, damn, why are you destroying these groups like this? But then letting other groups like Judgment Day be all fine and cool. I mean, they're, they're still somewhat slightly in drama, but nowhere near as much drama as the Bloodline. And people can't say, oh, the Bloodline sucks. All they do is stay in drama. No, the writing sucks. Whoever is booking this sucks. So, I mean, if they t remember, this is a job. Y'all got to do whatever they tell you to do. This is a job, man. And people fail to realize that. Like, people, like, I know a lot of people be like, oh, well, certain people got certain authorities and this and that. <clears throat> yeah, maybe, maybe if you're like a super big star legend. And even then, you still got to follow some type of orders. But this is a job, man. And it's like, what can you do? Just like any other job. If your job tells you you got to do this and do that, you have to do this and do that. And if you don't, you're gone. So we can't be blaming so much on these wrestlers like people like to do. Now, I'll call people out if they really do suck in the ring or make mistakes, you know. But when you know they're not being booked right, L.A. Knight versus Austin Theory after that, L.A. Knight wins. How predictable. Duh, L.A. Knight is going to win. Predictable as hell. Then you had the Brawl and Bruce go against Judgment Day. <clears throat> now, now, now SmackDown is becoming even more like Raw now. Boring ass Raw. Now Judgment Day is on SmackDown doing the exact same thing now. Why did you give Judgment Day all of that? Why? Why, man? Why? Oh, my gosh. 
So now the Brutes go face them, and they end up losing. You already know they lost. Uh, pretty obvious, right? Predictable. I mean, who cares? The Sheamus doesn't even win like that. So what makes you think these guys? These guys are like low key jobbers. They are, you know. They they this is another group that changed under Triple H. When when Vince McMahon was here. He had this group being way more together, and he had them all under, under a better gimmick together. Now they're all separate, and 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 like the, the, their group reminds me of Imperium, like just like when Imperium Gunther he's a goon, but his boys suck, you know, just like this. Like okay, Seamus he go a little hard, but his, his homies they just not good. So you so seeing them fight Judgment Day, you already know what's up. Right, they were showing pretty deadly as well. So expect pretty deadly to be coming for the tag team titles. Oh, and don't be surprised if pretty deadly wins them. Um, let me see. AJ Styles, Amashes, Luke Gallo. Oh yeah, he got into it with them. That was so goofy. Cause the main event was AJ versus uh Jimmy. And then he told them to leave. That totally reminded me of the Judgment Day. I don't need your help. Just stupid arguments coming out of nowhere. Just so uh, the scripts can be wrote and written. Just so obviously you'll lose. Because my first thought was Jay was going to win. But then when I start seeing some of the shenanigans, I'm like, man, maybe they're going to lose. But then once I seen this, and then I was like, yeah, he's going to lose. AJ's going to lose. Right, I told y'all about the Paul Heyman stuff. Jimmy said he wanted to get back with the bloodline. I know. See, they're messing them all up. See, you're making them look stupid. Now you're going to have to. So what was the point of Jimmy doing all of what Jimmy did if he was just going to go right back to him? And now here it go. Now you're trying to get back to him, but they're not letting you in. Like you with Sami Zayn or something. This is so stupid. Oh, man. Then we had Bobby Lashley in the street property. Stood toe-to-toe with the Judgment Day. Now, I guess it was cool to see them all suited up like this. I guess this is a little interesting. Just because Judgment Day versus Street Profits and Bobby Lashley, we ain't really seen that like that. And, I mean, y'all are supposed to be an up-and-coming group. Y'all haven't lost. Even though I'm still worried. Because, again, triple under Triple H, it's like, how much do you expect Bobby and them to do under Triple H? Come on now. I mean, pay attention to your champions right now. Look at all the champions. There's only one champion that's melanated. One. And and at this current time and moment, he ain't even got it going on good. So it's like, see? But under tri- but under our events, we had all types of champions. But under Triple H, it's just, nope. He just throws it to minorities every once in a while, but then takes them away and really is taking them away from all black people. That's why I was like, I don't really expect them. I, like, I, I kind of like found it weird because Bobby Lashley is like a manager out of nowhere. So that really got me. I'm like, so he doesn't wrestle. He's a manager out of nowhere. They might do something with him because it's Judgment Day. So I, I'm still looking forward to this a little bit because it's something a little different. But at the end of the day, I just don't feel hopeful. For as much as I like the Story Profits and Bobby Lashley, I just don't feel hopeful for them in any real big feuds. I just don't see them winning nothing big. Like, if they won these tag team titles, I'll be like, okay, that's interesting. Now you're really trying to put a mix on things, right? But this is the WWE we're talking about under Triple H, where things don't really be that interesting. Just like Shinsuke Nakamura versus Seth Rollins. Totally not interesting. Totally not. Especially knowing how they be booked. And last but not least, AJ Styles defeats Jimmy Uso. I know this is getting a little long. I need to end this. Um, Solo came out. You know, he did some stuff. I guess I'll just read it. It said, looking to get back into the good graces of the bloodline, Jimmy Uso took on the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. Style rocked Jimmy, who narrowly, and I don't like that either. Like, Jimmy, look how that's a downgrade. Like, AJ Styles wasn't doing nothing. But you get to fight Jimmy. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Remember that feud between AJ and Seth Rollins? You know, the one that got Seth Rollins' belt? Look how AJ was getting embarrassed that whole feud and never got an upper hand that whole feud. AJ was basically the jobber group with the OC. Beating up hit row and stuff. AJ was not doing anything but magically 
oh, let's have him go against Jimmy, who's like way up there. Now let's downgrade Jimmy and act like he's on AJ's level. Like that, that, that this whole thing is stupid. It's like when they was fighting backstage. It was just dumb. Then Solo comes out of nowhere, and it's always steady beef. Like, y'all, so, so the bloodline is just brain dead at this point. Just write them to be brain dead idiots who don't know how to put nothing to the side and just grew back up. That's that's what you're making the bloodline. Just You made them brain dead idiots who don't know how to, who, who are not smart enough to just put things aside to become stronger. Like they used to be under Vince McMahon. Let me hurry up. With Jimmy in control, Solo Sokoa appeared at the top of the ramp. Styles kept up the offense, hitting a scintillating backbreaker. But Uso kept fighting Sokoa. Fighting. Sokoa turned his back on Jimmy, allowing Styles the opportunity to send Jimmy into Sokoa. Styles wrapped up, up the win with a phenomenal forearm. After the match, the Judgment Day delivered. All right, he did lose too. My bad. I forgot he lost. I was thinking too much about that other match. After the match, the Judgment Day deleted Styles to be put down with a small spike in Sokoa. See, here go. And then Jimmy didn't even win the match. Remember I told y'all, man. See, this is why I be saying that, like, I don't know why people just ain't getting it yet. They want to believe some stuff that ain't real no more. I told, remember, remember when Jimmy and them first turned on Roman and everybody was getting geeked and acting like they was going to have something special and was going to beat Roman and do something big? Remember I told y'all from the beginning, I was like, he's not. they're not going to win and this is going to be an end to them. It's not going to be nothing no more. Have people not noticed how they've been trying to deteriorate and break down the whole entire group? It's like things are happening right in front of people's faces, but they just ain't acknowledging it for what it really is. And then here it go. Look what's going on. It's happening right in front of our faces. Not only are the twins split up, they're losing to jobbers. Like I like AJ Styles. He shouldn't be treated like a jobber, but he clearly wasn't like a jobber before this. I'm like you're losing against a jobber now, man, in main events. You see, couldn't even let Jimmy win the match. Hmm. Hmm. It's crazy. Like, like, notice these things, man. Notice these things. Notice in the last pay-per-view, there was no black people in it competing. You got Jey Uso, but he didn't compete in anything. There was not a single one. Come on now. This is bad. This show was like a 1.5, really. In total, this was like a 1.5 out of a five just wasn't really that great at all and it's the same nonsense with solo and the same up upping of other people we didn't even get john cena the same women's matches the same people looking good all the time that's why wrestling was so much better in the day back in the day some of the greats would take a loss get beat up sometimes make you think they were coming back not today not today all the favorites just went all the time just went all the dang time. Boy, I tell you. Alright, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Hit that like button. And I'll see y'all later for the next one.